السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ഹമ്മദുറ يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا الله اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان لكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل احسن حدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدوثاتها وكل ما حدث في الاسلام بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار today my dear brothers and men i would like to speak about and remind myself and you all that this life our wealth our children our health everything is an amana and a test from allah azza wa jalla there are so many of us without adequate income or so we may believe or so we may feel there are many of us who get married with the hopes that we can have many children there are many of us who want to get married but we cannot find anybody we call it nasib 
is not in our nasib. And we all know the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu that he would make most of the time. Rabbana, alhuma Rabbana, a'atini fi dunya hasnatin, wa'afaqa hasnatin adabunna. Oh Allah, give us the good of this life, in this world, and the good of the next life, in the next world, and save us from the adab of the punishment. And the Mufassirin said that this dua, it's a, one of those very comprehensive supplications which signify and denote that we have wife, we have good health, we have home, and these things. So what I want to remind myself and all is that sometimes having these things can be a great blessing, but at the same time can be our greatest test. And it can also cause a person to leave the fall of Islam, to leave the deen. So Allah knows best. And this week, when with our children going back to school or settling into school, and as many people are now returning to their regular work routines, and at the same time, we have many people who are starting a new business or profession. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of those who are starting the new profession. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and help our youngsters who are returning back to school. It's an easy transition for a lot of people. Because so many people... It's, it's normal for them, and they can adapt to change. But at the same time, there are many people that are suffering in silence. At the same time, for so many people, it's easier said than done. That now, after living in a bubble for over two and a half years, they have to now go in the workplace. They have to go to in-person learning. They are now suffering from high levels of social anxiety due to the fact that, at no fault of their own, they were isolating for two and a half years. And now for the very first time, they are now plunged into this new world or this new world order where they have to interact with people face to face and the majority of people are not wearing masks so since this will be the first time for so many people it's a shock to them it will be a shock to them due to the pandemic and due to the fact that they were staying home for so long they will find that this new normal is not an easy road for them to be on so I want to advise myself and you all that we need to have the top of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to navigate through these waters and this new normal that we're living in. We need to navigate with the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to proceed with caution, as they say. And what does that translate for us as believers? the taqwa of Allah, azawajal. That we need to proceed with the taqwa of Allah in every step we take, in every word that we utter. We need to keep this in our mind. That we may want so many things, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something better for us. So we need to make this dua a regular habit. Alhumma rabbana, aatin fi dunya hasanatin. Wa fil akhirat hasanatin wa aqin adhaabu nar. O Allah, Give us the good of this world and give us the good of the next and save us from the hellfire. So proceeding with caution means that we need to proceed with the talk of Allah as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of this test in Surah Taqban, verse number 14, where he says, Ya lidina aminu. Allah 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by saying, Oh, you who believe, really, your wealth that you have acquired, or we're running after, or have collected, really, our wealth and our spouses and our children are an enemy for us. But if we overlook, we forgive, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-forgiving, most merciful. إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالِكُمْ أَوْلَادِكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ وَاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ عَجُلٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again emphasizes that our wealth, our wealth and our children are a trial, a test for us. And with Allah is a tremendous reward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding all of this, فَتَقَ اللَّهُ مَا سَتَعْتُمْ أُسْمَ وَعَتِيُوا الْآيَةِ we need to have the God consciousness. We need to keep Allah in our remembrance, in our tongues, in our attitude, in our interactions, to the best of our ability. And hear and obey. Follow the deen to the best of our ability. Allah just says that. We must have the consciousness of Him to the best of our abilities. So with this in mind, there's a hadith in a Muslim of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal that one day, while the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam was delivering a khutbah, he seen his two grandsons, Hassan and Hussein, walking and stumbling, and they were wearing red cloaks, long shirts were red. They were walking and stumbling. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam saw them, he stopped his khutbah. And he got down from the mimbar and he picked up his two grandsons in front of him. And he said, Sadaq Allah wa Rasuluhu, inama amwalikum awladikum fitna. Allah and his messenger had spoken the truth. Verily, your wealth and your children are a trial for you. So, my dear brother, Salam Iman, in the majority of the times, in our pursuit of happiness, we will lose focus, or we will forget that in our excessive love of wealth and status and our wives and our spouses and our children, they are a trial for us. And at the same time, they are a great gift. Those who are not married, they don't know what it's like to be married. It's a gentle balance. Those who have children, they want, but they don't know what it's like to have children. It's another gentle balance. So we have to be careful what we wish for and what we want. And we need to prepare ourselves for those things. If we want those things, if we're not just making lip service, if we really want those things, then we must prepare ourselves for those things. Because these are a blessing, but at the same time, it's a great test and amana from Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the majority of us, we misunderstand the statement of unconditional love. What does it mean to have unconditional love for our children? We need to teach them. We need to educate them. We need to be, as Allah said, Qunnu Rabbaniin. We need to be good educators. That we but Rabbi. We want to bring up, that we should want to bring up the children the youth, and those smaller aspects of Islamic knowledge and etiquette and mannerisms before we send them out into the real world. Before we send them out to the real world, well, they'll have to implement that knowledge. Well, they'll see the ugly reality of people. So we don't need to be in that state that we have unconditional love, love. Because that's a distorted understanding. Where we say we love somebody unconditionally. We love our children unconditionally. No, that means we must educate them. And put them on the right path. This is the love that they need. This is the love that we need to impart to them. Because if we blindfold ourselves, say we love them unconditionally, then no for a doubt. Without a doubt that we will be disobeying Allah in our pursuit of happiness. We need to put taqwa of Allah first. 
This is our guard. This is what we put in front of us to guide us and to guard us against his disobedience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions taqwa with so many things. Allah subhanahu wa says, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Allah says, have taqwa of Allah so that you will be shown mercy. The taqwa of Allah is a source of our success. The taqwa of Allah is the means for us to be guided aright. So taqwa is a thing that we as Muslims need to have. And it's coming from this Arabic word, ittaqa, meaning to protect oneself. We protect ourselves by way of our taqwa of Allah Azza wa And the only way that we can do this, protect ourselves, is by trying to implement the taqwa, masata'atum, to the best of our abilities. We do not just do whatever happens or we just go with the flow and say that we are Muslim, alhamdulillah, that's not. That is not enough for us to just say that we are Muslim. We need to walk with taqwa. We need to speak with taqwa. We don't need to just speak for the listeners, but we have to know that Allah is Samir Alim, that He is the one who is the all hearing and the all knowing. This is Allah Azawajal. So when we speak, we need to speak with taqwa. When we act and interact, we need to interact with one another with taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the point that we will be able to differentiate between the waswasa, the, the whispers of the shayateen, the waswasa, the whispers of the ints, the human beings, shayateen and ints. And the waswasa of our own selves, the whispers of inner regions of our hearts, our desires. We have to be careful. We have to be weary of the shayateen, al will ints, and the waswasa that's affected our hearts to the point that we're blind to the realities of this world, which can ultimately lead us to disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the unfirm. Allah Azawajal reminds us in Surah Anfal, verse number 25, and we need to be mindful, have taqwa of the fitna that doesn't only affect a certain class of people or a certain people in particular. We have to be conscious of Allah. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in punishment. Ibn Mas'ud and Mujad commenting on this verse. He said that this verse was addressing, although it was addressing the Sahaba, although this verse was addressing the Sahaba, it is a general warning for all of us that there is something that will be considered as a fitna for us. So we need to be wary of that thing. There is something in each and every one of us that is considered as a fitna for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala generally says, Inama amwalakum wa awlalakum fitnatun. That verily and generally speaking, that in our wealth, in our families, our children, these things are fitna. But there are things which lead us and push and drive us to want to make so much more money. Why is it that we want to make so much more money? There's something that's a driving force behind us. That's what we have to try and understand. There isn't anything wrong with being ambitious and wanting to have more. There isn't anything wrong with having a good ambition in life. But when we are being driven, we have to look within ourselves to find out what is that driving force. Because we want to be more generous or do we want to show off on our neighbor? Another excellent example is in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari on the thought of Abu Sa'id. So the Dimash of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had stated, In dunya hilwatin khudira, when Allah mustakhfukum fiha, for naadatun maada ta'amalun. 
فتق الدنيا وتق النساء في أول فتنة بني إسرائيل كانت في النساء أو قام قال صلى الله عليه وسلم that really this dunya that we're all living in is حلوة الخضرة that is sweet and alluring and green so we need to look now that look at ourselves look at how we're acting and interacting how we're carrying ourselves in this world the prophet ﷺ, he went on to say that we need to watch out for the fitna of the women allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us vicegerents on this earth khulafat al-ard but we need to watch out for the fitna of this dunya and the fitna of women Because really the first fitna for Bani Israel cannot be Nisa from the woman. So we have to understand that life is a test. Why? What is driving the man to want to acquire more than usual when he has? There is something behind that that each and every one of us has to ask ourselves. Have to know mean that taqwa is that yardstick for the believer that will give us that awareness to understand right and wrong we will understand from before we speak that we shouldn't say this thing because it might be out of place it might be in not the best taste so i shouldn't say what i was planning to say or maybe i should try and find a way a better way to word what i was going to say Because the taqwa of Allah is not the taqwa of the human beings. The taqwa of Allah is not that we think that we're meek or we're weak. We watch what we do before we do, not because we're afraid. We don't have taqwa of the people. We have taqwa of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. While we watch our speech, while we watch what we say and how the manner in which it might be perceived by the listeners, it's not because we're afraid of the people. It's because we have taqwa of Allah, Azza wa Jal. So the taqwa of Allah is the believer knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever watchful over them. Not that we are fearful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us, that we know that the loving, kind Allah, our creator, Azza wa Jal, al-Wadud, is watching over us to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Alhamdulillah, I mean, Remember that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would always say this in his khutbah to Hajjah, in his speech of need, which all of the Imma and the Khatib of the Salaf they would say, "Ya lidin amnu, attaqallah, wa qulu qulan sadidan." O you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah, and always speak a word that is directed towards the truth. As a result, Allah Azza wa Jal يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يعت الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. We hear the the khatib or the salaf they always say this because this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always say, and he would this was coined as part of his khutbah to Hajjah, his speech of need. When we speak. In a manner which is directed towards the truth, no any outward crookedness. As a result of speaking with the taqwa of Allah, Allah will rectify our situation. Just lihi lakum amalakum. Allah will rectify our situation. We aghfir lakum the nubakum. Allah azza wa jalla will forgive us of our sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed achieved a firm handhold. So those of us who want an increase in their salary. They want more money. They want to leave their job to start a new job. They want to start their own business. It all begins with our lisan and hal. How we look at ourselves, our tongue, the tongue of truth in reality that we speak with is the same thing that we use to call on Allah with. So if our tongue is twisted, it's not straight. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always say, "This verse is in Surah Hazab." Yeah, they didn't amen you. Or you believe? Speak a straightforward word. 
Allah says, why do you say that what you do not do? So we know the Allah says, why do you say that what you do not know? We say inshallah, kidda wa kidda, but we don't mean it. But at the same time, we want so much. We want a better position in our job that we deserve, but we're not straight. We have money saved up. We have place, but we can't find a wife. Or we're always getting married and divorced. What's wrong? Because we're not straight. This is the basis. We're not straight. This comes from our tongues. We pray, but we are always full of kedib. Ghiba, namima. It's the taqwa where it starts. From the words that come out of our mouths. And where are the words emanating from? What's in our hearts? So, my dear brother, salam iman. Remember that life is a test. And many people have been living in a bubble for the past two and a half years. If we are strong, mashallah, tabarakallah, we're able to change and adapt to change easily. We do not need to make fun of others with racial slurs or put downs because we need to proceed with caution. And to proceed with caution, it means we need to proceed with the taqwa of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to live a life full of taqwa of Allah azawajal. Amin, amin. For those who are coming in late, I want to leave us off with a final advice regarding the taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal. That Alhamdulillah, for those who are strong and able to interact and are easily adaptable to change, Alhamdulillah, but as I mentioned last week, during last week's khutbah, that the opioid crisis in our region and in North America is real. There are many people who are using drugs because they have money, which is an amana, just to cope with life, with the struggles of life. Many people, majority of people who are using these opioids, they don't believe that they're hurting anyone but themselves. They don't believe that they're hurting anyone but themselves. Because when is the last time we've seen somebody shooting up in front of us? They usually use the drugs in the privacy of their own homes. This is why, man, we need to always pray to Allah and beg Allah to keep our feet firm on the deen. This is another dua of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that he used to make the majority of the time. Ya ma'alab al O turn of hearts, keep my heart firm on your deen. Keep my heart firmly attached to this Islamic way of life. As we know, the children now are settling into school. And there's a large influx of the, the youth who are online. They're now in person. So we need to remind the youth to be patient with them. Those of us who are now starting a new profession or new business, mashallah to barakallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in that business. And our children who are now into school, in person, and interacting with this large influx of new faces, we need to remind them that a lot of them were using a lot of drugs as coping mechanisms. As we know, during the pandemic, our government legalized a lot of drugs. So a lot of youth not understanding the reality to drug addiction will want to sample some of the drugs that come in so many different shapes and sizes now. Now that our children are returning to school, we need to advise them. Don't take the gummies. Don't take any sweet candies from your friends. Because the drugs are coming in these shapes. Our children may be naive or maybe they know. They just want to try it to see what it feels like. We need to advise them that it may seem like fun and games. But 
Drugs are addicting. And anybody will tell you who is addicted to drugs, they only wanted to try it in the beginning. And now they're strung out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us who are returning back to, to work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our children and protect our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those who are starting a new business, a, a new employment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all safe and healthy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on those who passed away and give them gentle for those al ala amin 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 inna allahu wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabiy ya alladhina amanu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ibrahim innaka hamidum majid allahumma barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ibrahim innaka hamidum majid rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah wa fi akhirati